everyone. Welcome to the 30 day photo challenge, April 2021 edition. My name is Elsie Kifuengare and I'm a Kenyan photographer based in the UK. So for the whole month of April, I'll be sharing with you photo stories from BIPOC women photographers. And we have one with us now. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Ash Esposito or Ashley, either one. Um, I'm located in Baltimore and I've been doing photography, I think, since 2013. Yeah. And what, what kind of photography do you do? Uh, I mostly get jobs for like family photography, event photography. Um, most, yeah, mostly family photography. So it's like mostly by word of mouth. This is probably like the first year that I've actually like put myself out there. Um, and I'm working on like a new website and actually getting like the business part of it good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I kind of like started on a whim, like I've always liked taking pictures. And so the first thing that I ever did was an event. And it was because my friend put together these like really cool like women's events. And I was like, ooh, can I be your photographer? Yeah. <laughs> like that was like a test run to see if I really wanted to do it. And so that's how I kind of got started. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and what photo or series would you like to share with us today? I would like to share a series of photos that I took at an event pretty close to where I live in Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore is still very segregated. Um, so there's still communities in like the surrounding counties that are predominantly white, uh, who have negative opinions about Baltimore city because it's a predominantly black city. Um, so when the George Floyd thing happened, you saw a lot of people that were like speaking out and three girls who were black who went to one of the predominantly white high schools uh, locally, pretty close to me, um, decided to put together a Juneteenth march through the predominantly white neighborhood, which mm -hmm. tends to be conservative. It had Trump flags. Um, wow. And so it was a very like bold move. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of followed the progress leading up to the event on social media. And these girls were threatened. You know, the, pe the people from the community were like locked and loaded like threatening them with guns or whatever. Wow. Um, and they were like, why here? And, the, and from the opinion of the girls, they were like, why not here? We're from here. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we graduated from this school where we have ties to the community. It's not like this is happening to you all. You know, this is happening in the world. It affects us. This is our home. So we want to have a march here. Mm -hmm. And so at eight months pregnant, <laughs> I went to Arbutus in Maryland, which is pretty close to where I live in Baltimore, and took photos of the event. Kind of like yeah. to, just in case anything happened, you know, like document it, um, just in case there was any issues. That that was my main concern because I, I do understand how tense it is in that area. But what I was pleased to see is how many allies came out. Mm from the community because I think that they didn't know that each other existed. So when you have these moments where people like commit to something and they're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be unapologetic. I'm going to put myself out there uh, and take whatever backlash I get. You actually find allies in your own backyard that you didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. So the series of photos that I want to show are three of my favorite photos from the event because they capture different times and moods of the event. Okay, so this is one of the girls that organized the event. Um, the march happened down the main street through the town. And so this is at the end of the street, there was a park and at the park, they had like allies from Baltimore City that came out to speak about gun violence and you know, uh, Black Lives Matter and all those things and, and really give like a strong presentation to the allies that were present they took it as an opportunity and to in support of these girls mm -hmm. um so this is her telling her experience um of going to a predominantly white school and i'll never forget like in this moment she was talking about how when you're in those situations and when you're the other person um you're not the standard of beauty and she spoke about like how that ruined her joy as a child. Um, and she said that she was like, you know, beautiful, black and happy as a child. And she said it just uh, destroyed her that like everything that represented her blackness was 
pushed back against because she was such a small minority in that community. And this is another organizer. And I love this one because this shows how much joy she had. Mm. At, you know, so they both kind of represented like both extremes you know what I mean like cursing all these people people that she recognized and also she would mention that there were people there that she grew up with who she sees her like racist now you know because it's all bubbling to the surface and so she like flung her hair back it was like an unbothered moment Mm. (laughs) so I was like yes like I love this yeah so that's one of my favorites and this is uh, the tensest moment in the whole event. And this was crazy. So like I said, I was eight months pregnant. I was standing on a median. I knew where the, the march was starting and I knew that it was coming down the main street. So I just waited. And so I see the people coming and there's this man that comes up behind me who's like heckling. He may have been one of the aggressors on social media, whatever. And so he just starts spitting off like crazy stuff, mm-hmm. uh, like at the crowd. And, you know, like a, there's a lot of people that stepped out, like like white people that were challenging him and were like, shut up, like, like go home or whatever, like don't threaten people. And this guy ran out, got like this close to his face with the megaphone. And I purposely did not get this guy's picture because I did not want to give him space from the real like take away space from the real story and the and the people that were um leading the movement like I wasn't even going to give him that attention um but yeah you what you can't see is like right where this ends is that guy's face (laughs) oh wow I don't even know what to say first and foremost you were eight months pregnant yes and I almost got punched in the face (laughs) My husband was right behind me and he's like, I don't think you realize how close you were. I was like, I got a great shot. I was about to ask, as in, where was your husband? Did he like agree for you to go out? And I know he 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 realizes the importance of such an event, which all mm-hmm. of us do. Yeah. You know. Uh, but and he's he, he's from the area, so he knows, like he couldn't believe it himself. He's like, in Arbutus? He's like, what? Yeah. So he was like, we have to like see this because he's like, this is so unbelievable. So he was down to go, but I I don't think, I think in that moment, that was the only one that scared him. The rest Mm. of it was great. Mm. And being heavily pregnant, weren't you worried about yourself at one point? As in like eight months is quite a risky period because you're almost due technically, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I was very like active and stuff. Like... Mm -hmm. Uh, I was picking up trash, like, cause I'm a litter person. Like I go around picking up litter uh, and also like, I love gardening. And so that felt like natural to me to like be out and about. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and just because it was, I felt well enough to do it. Cause I mean, I would have taken that into consideration. Like if I didn't feel well enough and, mm-hmm. or if there's any like medical concerns and stuff like that. And I didn't walk with them on the March. Like I drove around. So, okay. Um, so that, yeah, there was no way I was able to make that walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause a lot of protests, you do tend to do a lot of walking cause I've been to a few and yeah, it can take a toll on your body to, you know, at the time, adrenaline is running through you. You don't feel it. It's when you get home, you're like, why am I aching so much? It's because of the amount yeah. of done, right? But even, I love the way you captured the mood of the day, especially with the, with the ladies. Um, like you said, they were both extremes. One is like emotional, like you, her face is bent down. You can sense the frustration coming from her through yep. your imagery. And then also the other lady who's like her face is full of joy and like saying we are here this as in take it (laughs) yeah that was like a black girl magic moment (laughs) (laughs) I mean I love the the balance of that as in there's like you said they're both extremes like the sadness the frustration the anger and then mm. on this other end, there's this joy, like, yes, yeah. black joy, as in, we are here, we are joyful, we are here in your presence, there's nothing you can do to erase us, so you're yes. better off just accepting us, right? Yeah, but it was, and it was so great, like, I have so many pictures from this event, but just to, like, in this giant park with 
there were so many like white people who shocked me. Like it wasn't like an only black led, like it was a black organized, but it was like so many white people were there in like solidarity mm-hmm. and um, also like unapologetic and calling out hecklers, mm-hmm. you know? So that, that is where I see the shift, especially around here where neighborhoods are very segregated, you know, people, when they get uncomfortable, they claim, I don't see color. It's like, how convenient. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like that whole erasure situation is like very real, but this was a moment where they were like, you know what, we get it. And we're here to listen. Like, it wasn't like them trying to like overstep to, or take space from the people yeah. who should be organizing the event. Yeah. And with that last photo, I appreciate the fact that you didn't give the other person space you know the heckler and yeah Yeah. that is such a very that is a very conscious move or especially on your part and this is why it's also important for us to tell those stories because um any other situation or any other photographer we know who (laughs) would have given the frame you know what i mean (laughs) oh yeah no and 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 the idea like i had the uh, portfolio review with reuters and she said that the way that i i talk about space and uh being conscious of space and not not taking space from those who can speak on their own behalf Mm. um because say for instance i did have him in this picture there's a likelihood that somebody even from that are on our side could go out and find him and give him all the all the the attention from this one moment but the the real story is in this guy Mm -hmm. saying you know what I'm not gonna punch you but I'm gonna get two inches from your face and I'm gonna keep screaming black lives matter Mm -hmm. like because that's what he was yelling and I was like we live in a new time because you know my grandmother's generation you could go missing for stuff like that I know so Mm. it's wild it's like you know when people say like we're our ancestors wildest dreams it's true Hmm. Wow. So profound and so deep. <laughs> what else can I add to that? In, what else is there to say, really? But yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. I'm, I'm very happy that I trust my instincts and like went because, mm. you know, not not ever. I was the only photographer there because wow. I don't think that if you don't have context and if you don't know where you are and who you're dealing with, sometimes you may not understand how important an event is. Mm. So understanding the culture of like Arbutus, like historically, like it's definitely shifted, mm. but understanding that that's a, that's a um, definitely conservative area, you know, there's giant Trump flags, like, so to the audacity of a Juneteenth march for George Floyd through this town where they don't see color. Mm. Um, you know, I just knew it was going to be like a moment. And, and, you know, it, it touched on my story too, because I grew up in an area like that where, you know, I didn't see people like me, like I was considered the black girl in my grade. And I'm also, you know, so it's like, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I, there might have been two of us or something mm-hmm. uh yeah there wasn't a lot I mean it was very rural but even still like I don't think that even even as you know black people in school with majority white people you still don't connect on your blackness or you're not able to um outwardly express your blackness mm-hmm. like you're you're trying to like fit in sort of and uh, make your blackness like dull your blackness in order to make other people more comfortable even as a child like yeah that is very present and it's it's crazy where we're at now it's interesting when you say that did you find yourself like code switching you know what code switching is oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no <laughs> definitely because you might <laughs> I'm even learning stuff like I didn't even know something like that existed and I'm like what is code switching and then and then I realized that when I came here I was doing it yeah yeah I was doing it it's so like subconscious and Mm. like but it, it also has to do with you know generations of like being in those spaces where it's like you're not on your own turf sort of yes so in order to, it's like almost like a survival tactic, I feel like, um, because, you know, when you talk about people trying to find work and housing, all those things, it all comes to that. Because, for example, my mother, who's dark skinned, um, 
uh, and she, our voices sound exactly the same. So when she, when I was a baby, I was born right outside of Boston, Massachusetts. So when I was a baby, she told me that she went around calling places and saying like, Hey, like, is this apartment available? Like, when can I come see it? And every time she would show up, they would say it was rented when they saw her in person. So my dad, who is white passing, um, multiracial, he's like Navajo, Spanish, Mm -hmm. um, and white, uh, he was able to go out and find an apartment immediately and he's not the smartest guy. (laughs) So it's not like he was like more qualified to go out and find housing. It was like, it's obvious that in certain cases we have to do that, like for survival and, you know, even being pregnant, you know, no compassion. Hmm. So thank you so much, Ashley, for sharing the photographs with us and your story behind the photographs. Uh, It's really inspiring to hear such stories. And uh, yeah, um, I can't wait to see more work from you. Uh, I'm sure I will be leaving all the details of where you can find Ashley's work in the description bar below. But before we go, we have this fire question round, which I thought would be a quick and fun way to ask photography related questions. So just pick the first thing that comes to mind. So are you ready? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Uh, fixed lens or telephoto? Oh, telephoto. Uh, Lightroom or Photoshop? Lightroom. Color or black and white? Black and white. Uh, DSLR or mirrorless? Mirrorless. <laughs> I don't have one. I, I have one coming in the mail, Yay. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the last one, film or digital? Digital digital and that's it (laughs) yay that's so great what mirrorless are you getting uh the sony a7 III oh wow okay yeah so i had the um getty images portfolio thing and and she noticed things about what i was trying to do make my cam current camera do which it's not equipped to do at all like i have a nikon d3300 yes Uh, so it's like not good and low light and, you Mm. know, so she said, uh, she had mentioned, she's like, yeah, you might want to check out the Sony series. And so after like looking and, um, like understanding like those line, that line of cameras more and seeing like the type of work that people are doing and what they're pushing the camera to do sort of, um, it, I was like, oh, heck yes. Like that's a great fit and I was lucky enough to be able to get it because I had built a website for some people so oh wow yeah yeah yay, like yay. fund it yay yes. investing in yourself that's, that's yeah what investing in yourself is uh, upgrading your equipment and mm-hmm. yeah just putting money back into your business yes. as a photographer and stuff like that right yeah and and a website like that's like more my wheelhouse like with my day job and stuff so I was like how can I monetize what I do at my day job and fund my photography and it just ended up working out perfect all the stars aligned and yeah able to get like a crazy lens in the body of the camera I'm like (laughs) so shocked right now (laughs) because I've had the d3300 for Mm -hmm. the whole time but if it works if it ain't broken Keep yeah. using it, yeah. And oh, yeah, definitely. Use it as your second body, as your emergency, like, kit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, Ashley, for sharing your amazing work with us. And uh, please be sure to follow Ashley. I'll leave all that details in the description bar below. So until next time, bye. Bye. <laughs>